What's up guys, Bromley from Empire Barbell. Today we're gonna to go over some squat fixes. Squatting can be a very complex endeavor. Everybody's built differently. There's a few different ways to do it. You might squat one way because you think you'll perform better. You might squat one way because you're trying to avoid an agging injury. You might squat one way because you're trying to develop your body in a specific way. So having more insight into why things work the way they do and how your body operates the way it does, it's gonna give you a lot of help when it comes to making intelligent decisions about your training. So one of the main fixes we're gonna go over is the squat morning, all right? So we're gonna do the squat morning fix today. It's gonna to be uh, basically addressing the issue that happens when people descend into the squat, right? They're coming down and they're nice and upright, they hit the bottom, and then as they come up, the hips shoot back, putting them into a really awful bent over position where they then recover and stand up. So the thing to know is that there's a lot of moving pieces with the squat, right? Your musculature, quads, glutes, hamstrings, everything has to coordinate. So you're simultaneously moving multiple joints and how one joint moves is gonna affect how another joint moves. So you get this really tangled um, web of motor patterns that happen. So it can be kind of counterintuitive when you're trying to look at what's happening and address the fix right off the bat. It can, it can be quite often not the first thing you would think of. So with this one, this is a perfect example. A common fix that's recommended for this one is to train good mornings, right? Because it stands to reason that if you're getting into this bent over position when you squat, you should be as strong as possible in that position. But we have to go down the flow of logic here, okay? When you do a good morning, you're isolating all of the movement in your hips. Upper body midsection has to be rigid. The glutes and hamstrings are releasing, right? And they're the muscles, the glutes and hamstrings that fire your hips through. Quad engagement is virtually non-existent because your knees don't really go through any movement. They just kind of have to stay there. So imagine that I'm a high bar squatter and I come down and I'm nice and upright and I'm in this perfectly balanced squat position. I feel good. What is happening with my quads when my knees extend and my hips push back because that's a position that you'll ultimately end up in when you do a squat morning as you go to come up and the knee is extending the quadricep is contracting right but no network is being done that's the important thing to know is that the knee is moving but no work is being done because the bar stays in the same spot your hips just shoot back so now you're bent over in this horribly disadvantaged position and uh by some means, even though your body couldn't move in a very tight, very technically sound position, your body could move when you were bent over in this really disadvantaged position. That tells you that your body's putting yourself in the only position that you can move the bar in, and that's where all of the tension, all of the work has to be dealt with by the hips. So in this position, bent over and standing up, you're defaulting to that position because those muscles are actually stronger. Your body is shifting you into a position where you can actually maneuver the weight. So long story short, the squat morning is almost universally a problem with quadricep activation. You're going to see it a lot with guys who have better deadlifts than they, uh, than they have squats. Their deadlifts are probably more comfortable, more technically sound, uh, or by some other means, their squat is a really, uh, really deviated quite a ways away from their, uh, sorry, their deadlift is deviated quite a ways away from their squat. So one good example I have uh, is a guy started talking on a forum who's looking for squat help. His name's Josh Pinkerton. Uh, very good deadlifter. He's actually a very strong athlete, over 400 pound bench, uh, 250 strict press. I don't know how much he weighs, he's a relatively lighter athlete. I think he's a middleweight strongman. Uh, doubled 650 on a deadlift, which is, I mean, that's an impressive feat. Realistically, his deadlift is knocking right around 700 pounds. Uh, his best squat is a 475. So when you hear a 200 pound discrepancy like that, it either has to do with you have leverages that favor you so much for one lift versus the other that you're gonna have that spread. Kaylor Woolham's a good example of that. His leverages for deadlifting are so good that I believe his deadlift runs about 300 pounds higher than his squat. And you can see that by picking apart his videos. His squat is a squat, but his deadlift is something else entirely. So that's one example. The other example is that you're having these uh, severe technical issues with it, right? So that some the things don't line up, things don't make quite as much sense. When you watch Josh deadlift, it looks clean. It looks efficient. He looks comfortable. When you watch him squat, it doesn't look comfortable at all. So then we have to ask, okay, is it 
because his leverages are different? Is it because he's tight or weak somewhere? Is it just a technical cue he's missing? What's going on here that's causing this deviation? So for Josh specifically, and we'll show the picture, this is him in the bottom of the squat. This is him on the way up. Now notice at the bottom, he looks pretty good. His ankles roll in a little bit. That's not quite as optimal, but you know what? He, he still looks reasonably upright, reasonably comfortable. He's not super bent over, knees are a bit forward. Uh, hips are settled in uh, nice and even. He's balanced and he's deep enough. Those are the big things. So when he goes to push up, you see how his hips shoot way back and he ends up in what is damn near a good morning position. So with reasonably lightweight, considering how strong of an athlete he is, Josh gets pitched way forward when he squats because he cannot maintain an upward position. His body has to good morning the weight up because that's where he's stronger. He's a fantastic deadlifter, so his body wants the glutes and hamstrings to take over because they're so much better. If his quads were up to snuff, he would be able to maintain that upright position because when the knee extends, when the quads contract, it would move the whole system upwards. But instead, the knee is extending and nothing's happening. So that's a sign right there. The quads are the weak area. If I'm Josh and I have this beautiful deadlift and this ugly squat, so I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna get settled in nice and comfortable in the hole. When I go to push up, my hips track back and I have to recover from this position, that's all back, that's all glutes, that's all hamstrings. I can even feel it by reproducing it with lighter weight that to stay upright, my quads have to work much, much harder. So the recipe for fixing the squat morning, 90% of the improvement you're gonna see is maintaining a rigid technical ceiling. That means as I get to weight where I can no longer maintain a crisp upright position, I shut it down. And the problem with the guy, especially a guy like Josh, who probably thinks of himself as a very strong human being and then gets mad because a 400 pound squat feels heavy and awkward to him. The instinct is to just go super saiyan three and just get angry and try to gut out more and more and more. And the problem is, is you just start to reinforce really bad motor patterns. You just make the same mistakes over and over and over. And you actually teach your body to do it that way. If anything, over a long period of time, you just get more efficient at moving the squat the wrong way. So all of the work to be done is going to be a byproduct of very controlled, very meticulous, very precise movements. So it stands to reason that if the, bar, if the quads are too weak to extend the knee, while moving the load upwards, that just by virtue of maintaining that position with lighter weight, the quads are gonna get stimulated. They're gonna get stronger. They're gonna learn how to move through this patterning. And as they get stronger, it's gonna be easier and easier to maintain that position. Of course, there's supplementary work you can do to get them ahead of the curve faster. You can isolate the quads, but I always find the best carryover is gonna come from moving in the context of your main lift that you're trying to fix. So the more squat specific fixes you do, the better that uh, your squat's gonna look, right? The faster that squat morning is gonna get taken care of. So uh, I helped, I reached out to Josh. Uh, I hope he starts this program. I gave him a program we've had a lot of success with. Uh, it's high volume, very high volume day, reduced volume day, but frequent squatting throughout the week and the weights very slowly taper up. But the benefit of it is it's thousands of reps over the course of the training program that gets you to practice. It's just like riding a unicycle, walking a tightrope. The more practice you get, the more successful touches you get, the easier it gets, the more automatic it gets. And that's what we're looking for. So my instructions to him were stay very upright. Don't let yourself bend over. I don't care if you have to stick with 225 for your training weights. You need to practice good habits. The volume is going to do the rest. Front squats are great. If you have the shoulder mobility, even overhead squats, things that force you to be very upright, you don't have the benefit in a front squat to bend over, right? If you bend over, you dump the bar. So staying with front squats, forcing yourself to be upright, forcing yourself to hit the hole and come back up, it's going to force growth out of your quads because you have no other choice. You can't move any other way. So that technical ceiling, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. You wanna fix your squat, your deadlift, your overpress, whatever it is, Stability and coordination come first. You're gonna hear me say that a lot too. Stability and coordination come before strength and power and speed every single time. All right, so that's our squat fix for the uh, squat morning, right? Let's clean up your squats, let's put up bigger numbers, let's stay healthy, 
And go ahead, guys, and click the link at the bottom. Once again, 50 page free ebook on bracing. A lot of this carries over to things we just talked about. It's absolutely free. And I appreciate any feedback you guys give. You want to read through it, tell me some things you'd like to see, some things you didn't really understand. I love helping people out one on one. So uh, give me as much feedback as you can, and I'll respond as quick as I can. So once again, this is Bromley with Empire Barbell. We'll see you at our next squat installment.